and welcome to First Church Virtual Service. My name is Patrice Hall, and thank you for joining us today. Before we hear the word of God from our very own Dr. Dennis W. Bishop, I have a few announcements to share. FWBC Family and Friends, the physical doors of the church are reopening, and we want to invite you to join us. On January 2nd, 2022 at 10 a.m., we will be partaking in corporate communion together. Doors will open at 9.30 a.m. and masks must be worn for the duration of your time in the building. You will also be required to sign a COVID release waiver to participate in in-person worship. Transportation will not be provided at this time. We are making every effort to prepare for a successful re-entry and we appreciate your patience during this process. We are excited about seeing each other and fellowshipping in person. We must continue to be safe. We ask for your full cooperation as First Church opens the doors in 2022. On New Year's Eve, Friday, December 31st, from 12 noon to 1.30, 
we will have a drive-through prayer line at the rear of the church. Please join us for a priestly prayer from our very own Dr. Dennis W. Bishop over you and your family. We will be coming to you virtually for our New Year's Eve service this year. Tune in at 10.30 p.m. on December 31st for a mighty word from our pastor. Corporate Sunday School will continue to be offered via Zoom in January and a new schedule. This class will be conducted from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. each Sunday until further notice. There is a lot going on at FWBC. To stay connected with First Church, join our mailing list. Go to our website and fill out the form today so you won't miss out. We thank you for your continued support of FWBC. It is important during these unprecedented times that we continue to contribute to our church home so that when it's safe to return, we may do so. We invite you to give. Visit our website at www.firstwalltown.org and click the giving link. We are so happy to have you here at Virtual First Church. Here at First Wall Town, everybody is somebody and nobody is all but Christ. Be blessed. night the stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt his worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, or oh, hear the angel's voice says, O oh, night divine, O oh, night. When Christ was born, oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. Truly, He taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Change shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore. His power and glory pro 
proclaim His power and glory proclaim O Christ, O Christ divine Let's pray while you play softly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for Jesus the Christ. We only come to bring unto you our praise and adoration today. We call you wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and certainly you are our Prince of Peace. Your ancient of days. You are our strong tower, our deliverer, our soon coming king. And in your name, to your name, someday every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that you're Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord, now here we are once again with our elbows pressed against the window seals of heaven and we would only see Jesus. Lord, we don't want to be seen, but we want you to be seen. We want to put you on display today. And so now, Father, touch, heal, set free, and deliver. May this word be a word of deliverance. And may it set captives free today and strengthen believers as you promised in your word to do. And now we give you glory and honor. And thank you in Jesus' name. Well, if you are in agreement with that prayer today, go ahead and do like you normally do and write it in the comment section and give a great big amen. It's the day that the Lord has made and we have come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Well, we will continue to bring you virtual messages, but on next Sunday, if the Lord says the same, first Sunday in January 2022, we're looking forward to returning to this building for in-person worship. Somebody go ahead and put some clapping hands out there and bless the Lord. The Lord is good. He has been so good and he's still good right now. And we're looking forward to our returning to in-person worship. You've heard some talk about it. Uh, we have come over the last Sunday or two to express some of the things that will be prerequisites of returning into this building and we will follow those things, but we're coming back in a spirit of love and peace and harmony and unity and joy and a spirit of worship only unto our God. And we thank God today for Jesus to our FWBC family, our Facebook family, YouTube family, Asalamu Alaika to our friends and brothers. God bless you. And we are certainly thankful that you have joined in with us again. Even though we will be returning to in-person worship, we will still be worshiping where you can at a later time receive the messages and the services virtually. For those of you that are out of state, out of town, in college, in schools, wherever you might be, people who have been joining us across the east and west coast for all of this time now, you'll still be able to receive the services virtually. But we're looking forward to coming back in person. And we thank God for your giving, your time, your patience. Thank our team, uh, media team, and all of those who have been laboring and working so hard to uh, bring these services to you virtually. Uh, we'll still be working together. Everybody will still be teaming up to get it done and to see to it that you get these messages virtually. Let's go to the Word of God for the sake of time and share a few passages of Scripture with you today. Thank our music ministry and everybody who has participated in this worship experience today. I don't know about you, 
but I sense the presence of God even right now. I sense his presence in this place and uh, we have come to give him all of the glory and the honor. First Peter chapter five, first Peter five and verse 10, where we have been now for the last few weeks. First Peter chapter five, verse 10. And we want to come back and lift up that verse to you again, elaborate on it for just a little while, and then we will move from here. Amen. I'm going to read it to you again from the uh, King James Version, and then we'll elaborate on it along with, uh, hopefully today we'll get to verse 11, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll cover as much ground, much territory as we can. Let's read that together. But the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by whom Christ Jesus. After that, you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Now, we've been talking a whole lot about this. We've already dealt with him making us perfect only by Christ Jesus as God takes our suffering, as God takes what we go through, as we are calling it our sifting time, as we are partnering with God, only God himself, the apostle Peter, comes out saying, only God himself, not Peter, because Peter failed. Peter went through that period of suffering. But Jesus told him, when you come back, after your restoration, strengthen everybody else that are believers in Christ. And here Peter is doing his ministry, his evangelism, his work that Jesus told him he was going to do. And he says these words that are such a blessing to every born-again believer. After we have suffered a little while, the God of all grace through Jesus Christ, God himself through grace is going to perfect us, establish us, strengthen us. And now I want to look at the fourth thing today that the Apostle Peter says here in this passage of Scripture. He simply says this, that God himself is going to do what? Settle us. Go ahead and write it, somebody, in the comment section. He is going to settle us. Speak that into your spirit. Speak it over yourself. You don't need a prophet from across town. You don't need a prophet from out of town. You can speak these words over yourself as the Apostle Peter speaks them to us and say to yourself, in Jesus' name, be settled. Speak it to yourself. Speak it in Jesus' name. Speak it by faith. A lot of times people say, well, we can speak a whole lot of things Got to have a life to match up with it. I agree with that 100%. If you've got that life to match up with it and you're speaking it by faith, go ahead and speak it. Speak it to yourself. Say to yourself today, get settled. What are you going to settle in? Going to settle in the promises of God? Going to settle in the word of God? As I talked last week about us attaching ourselves to him through prayer, through the word, through meditation. Listen. We're going to become more settled. We're going to get settled in our faith. We're going to get settled in what we believe the word of God is saying. We're going to get settled in what Jesus is saying. We're going to get settled in whatever is happening around us. We're not going to settle in what's happening around us. We're going to get settled in the midst of whatever may be happening around us to the point that is not going to upset me or confuse me, or make me doubt the capability or the power of God. His word is going to still be valid. His word is going to still be truth. 
His word is going to still be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm going to get settled in that. And when you're settled in something, it's pretty difficult and pretty hard for somebody to upset what you're settled in. Notice this. The apostle Peter says some beautiful things here that only God himself can do. Only Jehovah, only Yahweh, only God himself. And I'm not talking about a God or any God. I'm talking about the God, the God of this universe, the God of love, the God of peace, the God of forgiveness, the God of all power. Only God himself will settle us. And I want you to notice that word in the Greek, settle. Jot it down. Somebody write it in the comment section. And before I go in with that word, go ahead and give somebody a great big God bless you at this point. They don't mind you calling their name. Call their name out and give them a great big God bless you. And listen, while you're blessing somebody today, tell them to be settled in this word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm speaking to every one of you, and I'm saying to you, be settled in this word today. Be settled in the fact that God is still the God of the universe. Be settled in the fact that God still has all power. Be settled in the fact that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Be settled in your healing. If God says you're healed, be settled in that today. Be settled in the fact that if he says to you, as he said to the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Listen, go ahead and settle in that. Write it in the comment section as you're giving somebody a great big God bless you. Tell them to be settled. You want to give a shout out to your children, your grandchildren, your family. Go ahead and shout it out and say, family, be settled in this word today. Have a watch party, share it with somebody. Let's get started in the word. In the Greek, that word settle in the Greek means simply to secure. That's what it means. That word settle, to secure as one would a foundation to ground, in other words, with security and I want to tell you that in a world in which we now live many of us are still grounded because only God himself can ground us so much uncertainty in this world so many things are uncertain so many things happen in the course of a day you go in one minute and things are one way and before you can get settled in that minute Something can go topsy-turvy or happen around you or in your life or in the life of your family that could really shake our whole foundation. But the purpose we are still standing because we know we are settled in him and in his word. We are grounded in him and with him. Only God, write it in there, only God can secure us with this kind of security. Can I draw this picture for you right here? Only God knows what your tomorrow is going to be like. <laughs> Here we are standing here on December the 26th, 2021. And if the Lord tarries, Monday morning will come, December 27, and you and I are standing today and don't know what tomorrow is going to bring or hold, but I know who's holding me fast and securing me to face tomorrow. Only God. I can't do it. You can't do it for me. You can't even do it for yourself. I can't even do it for myself. I don't know what the next moment, the next hour, the next day is going to bring. 
but I know one who knows. And you know what he's doing today for tomorrow? He's securing me today through his word and through prayer to face whatever tomorrow brings. We sometimes and we often sing the song, What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Listen, leaning on the everlasting arms. Here's what the hymnologist says. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Arms. How many of you know he does have everlasting arms? That first verse starts out in that hymn, What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. But I like when he get down here and he says, What have I to dread? What are you dreading today? What are you fearing today? He ends up by saying, I have blessed peace. I'd like to add to what the hymnologist says. I have blessed hope. Let me add again. I have blessed trust. And I have blessed faith with my not distant Lord, but my very close, near Lord. That's what the writer says. He says, I've got all of these blessed things with my Lord so near. You know why? I've attached myself to him, as I told you last week, and he's attached himself to me, and we're in partnership together. And he says, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms, the arms that can hold me, the arms that can comfort me, the arms that can shield me, the arms that can protect me, the arms that can provide for me, the arms that can heal me, the arms that can save me, and the arms that can keep me. He says, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. My brothers and sisters, listen to this. God secures all of our nerves, is what the writer is saying. God himself secures all of our thoughts, our fears, our emotions, when they are all over the place sometimes. You ever been there? I have. Sometimes emotions can be all over the place. <laughs> Sometimes we can look at a situation and the emotions just all over the place. Sometimes we can hear news about something that's happening in our lives or with our health or with family members. And our emotions are just all over the place. Sometimes finances get a little funny and our emotions are just all over the place. <laughs> oh, but I'm thankful today for a God who can secure all of our emotions when they're all over the place. And all of the uneasiness and all of the restlessness that you and I can sometimes feel the Apostle Peter who is still strengthening the brothers and sisters and believers in Christ says God himself after you have suffered a little while after you have wrestled with those emotions and dealt with the uneasiness and dealt with the restlessness and dealt with the confusion and dealt with the discomfort, he says, the God of all grace through and by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, he's going to do what? Perfect us. He is going to establish us. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. He's going to settle us or ground us. That's what he is saying here. He's saying only God can bring us to the point of knowing that I'm safe and secure from all alarms. Just leaning 
on the everlasting arms. Let me ask you before I move on to the next verse in this message. Let me ask you, are you leaning on the everlasting arms? Are you leaning on Christ Jesus? Can you say on Christ the solid rock I stand? We, we, we're getting ready to exit out of 2021 if the Lord tarries. And in another week or so, we're going to be entering into 2022. Can you, can you say he, he's brought me all the way through 2020 and 2021, and I've been leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm, I'm safe and secure from all alarms. Some things that set the alarm off. <laughs> but God gave me the code through Jesus to turn the alarm off. Help me, somebody. So some things that just set me off in my spirit. I had to go to the Word. And I had to settle myself in the Word. And I, I, I had to pull away from people and settle myself in prayer. But when I came out of prayer and when I came out of meditating on the Word, listen, he, he, he gave me the understanding and the know that I am still safe and secure from all alarms, no matter what the alarm alarm might be I'm safe and secure from all alarms as we're getting ready to embark upon the end of this year and embrace the new year are you safe and secure from all alarms I hadn't done much talking, and thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that back to my remembrance, to my attention. You probably already may have seen it uh, on the screen at some time or another, but I didn't do much talk about it. But New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, excuse me, New Year's Eve, December 31st, the, the Lord had been dealing with me uh, uh, about having an in-person service New Year's day at, at 12 noon. I, I knew the Lord was saying something to me about an in-person service, but when the board, the executive board, uh, the board of trustees and deacons and the chairs and co-chairs and myself who have been prayerfully working together and prayerfully strategizing and, and prayerfully discussing and meeting and talking about the business of the ministry and return dates and, and uh, even we discussed the date and, and we didn't feel settled in our spirit. There's that word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We didn't feel settled in our spirit about the date that we were projecting to come back. And so we went back to prayer and we went back to seeking God and some of us went back to fasting and some of us stayed in the presence of God and in his word and meditated day and night and, and asked the Lord, what will you have us to do? And, and as a board, let me give that disclaimer, as a board, not, not a just pastor decision, but as a board decision, as an executive board decision, as a, as a decision between chairs and co-chairs and deacons and trustees and preachers that sit in the board meeting, we, we, we decided upon coming back on the first Sunday in January and God settled that thing in our spirit. I brought up the fact that I wanted to do something New Year's Day like an in-person service and uh, as we talked about some things and strategized over some things, we, we came to the conclusion together that, uh, that, that we might want to wait since we are planning to come back on the first Sunday. We, we, we might want to just wait and not do the New Year's Day service and just give it a couple of days and we come back into a fresh, clean, sanitized auditorium all together for the worship service. And I was in agreement with that, 100% agreement. I, 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 didn't, I didn't dismiss what I knew the Lord was doing or saying. I just, I just needed more clarity. And so... Uh, after we left the board meeting and we all left in harmony and uh, thanking God and blessing God for what he had said and what he had done and for what he was doing. Uh, a couple of days later, the Lord dropped it in my spirit and, and I was riding one morning and God brought it to my attention while I was riding and praying that morning. And uh, when God finished talking to me and dealing with me about it, I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's it right there. That's it. And, and so he brought New Year's Day back to me again. And here's what the Lord brought to my attention. And we're going to do this New Year's Day starting at 12 noon until 1.30. We're going to have a drive through prayer line going on here at the church. New Year's Eve, December 31st 
at 12 noon until 1.30. You'll drive up to the front of the church and come around the back of the church if the weather permits. Now, if it's raining and the weather doesn't permit, or if it's snowing or sleeting or hailing, we will be in the front of the church. You'll drive up in front of the church, and you'll come up under the drive-through canopy at the front doors, and we'll be standing under the canopy out of the rain if it's raining, if it's inclement weather. If not, you will drive around the back of the church, and what the Lord has laid upon my heart to do is to pray over every automobile that comes on that day to bless you and your family with the priestly prayer. The Lord told me to bless and speak over every household the priestly prayer, and you will just drive right on through once I stand and speak the priestly prayer of God's word and any other prayer that God may give me to pray for you and your family. That's what I want to do that day. And then I'm going to give you something as you get ready to drive off. So that's going to take place on December 31st. And the Holy Spirit just dropped it back into my spirit to bring it back to my remembrance as we were talking about as we are going out exiting out of this year and embracing the new year the Lord laid it on my heart to speak a priestly prayer over you and your household to launch you into 2022 so that you can come into 2022 already settled. Hallelujah. There's that word, settled, in the fact that the priestly prayer that's going to be prayed over you is going to be prayed in the spirit and the power and the anointing of God's word and God's presence. Presence, and so you won't have to fear and you won't have to dread what's going to take place for me in 2022. But when you leave this parking lot, and even if you don't get a chance to get here, I'm still going to speak New Year's Eve virtually. Starting at 1030, we'll be coming into your homes, your places virtually, and I'll speak the word of God over you there. Also, if you're not able to drive through here, on December 31st at 12 noon. Let's go back to the word. Are you standing on Christ, the solid rock? <laughs> Look at what he says in verse 11. And I've been dealing with this now Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, how he's going to perfect us, how he's going to establish us, how he's going to strengthen us, and how he's going to do what? Settle us. Anybody feeling settled now because of his word? Any, anything that, that's been taking place in your life, but you can say right now and write it in the comment section or just throw up a hand and say, Pastor, I'm feeling that settlement in my spirit right now. I, I feel the Holy Ghost settling me in what I believe God's going to do and what I believe God's going to say and how I believe God is going to use me at this time, not waiting until 2022 come in, but when you're hearing this word right now, I am I'm becoming settled in what I believe God's going to use me to do starting right now because of this word. Go ahead and write it in and tell somebody I feel the settling of Jesus right now. Let's look at verse 11. Some of y'all got to be settled in this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of us got to get settled in the things that we've laid at the feet of Jesus. Some of you all got some stuff at Jesus's feet right now, but you're still worrying about it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, some of us are still toiling with and worried about some things I've already laid at the feet of Jesus. Listen, here's what the Lord is saying to us right now, including me. If you've laid it at my feet, then be settled in the fact that I can do it. Here's the thing you got to understand. I don't care how it's looking. I, I, I don't care how much more heat has gotten turned up. You have got to be settled in the fact that if I have laid it at the feet of Jesus and I've laid it there by faith... I'm coming up now settled in the fact that it's already done. Don't know how long, but I know it's done. Don't know when it's going to manifest, but I know it's done. Don't know how Jesus is going to work this thing, but I know it's done. I don't know when it's going to take place, but I know it's done. You've got to get settled in that fact as the Lord gives that to me right now. I want to give it to somebody, whether in this auditorium, or whether you're watching us virtually right now, I want you to say to yourself, I'm going to settle myself in the fact that I know God's going to do it. Not can do it, but going to do it. Hallelujah. Get settled in that thing. Let's look at verse 11. 
Let's go to verse 11. He says this. Here's what the writer says, the apostle Peter. After he says in verse 10, but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, sound, settle you, or ground you. And listen to what Peter said. <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I love this. Listen to what, listen to what this guy, l- listen to what this guy, who Jesus in St. Luke 22 sat at the table with that night while they were eating the last supper together and said, Simon, Simon, call your name there. Satan desires to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith won't fail. And Jesus says, like he's speaking to some of you right now, when you're converted, when you're restored, when you make your comeback, when you get over it, (laughs) when you wake up from it, (laughs) he says, strengthen your brothers and sisters that are believers. After all of this happened, the brother became so perfected in what he now knows the enemy can't do and doesn't like. He he became so perfected in his attachment and partnership with Jesus that he now picks it up in the 11th verse. And I want some of you today to make this 11th verse your life verse that's going to launch you into 2022. I want you to do this. Pastor, how do I do that? How do I make this my life verse? Well, first of all, I want you to hear me when I read it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. I want you to read it with me. I want you to hear the words. I want you to look at whatever suffering you may have suffered for a little while. And understand what Jesus said to Peter that he's saying to every one of us now. That I'm going to perfect you. I'm going to establish you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to settle you or ground you. And listen to what the apostle Peter says about him in this next verse he speaks of Jesus now and listen to what he says he says from the King James version to him him who Jesus the Christ be glory and dominion for ever and ever so be it (laughs) amen that's what he says in the king james let me read it to you from the amplified version he says from the amplified for all power belongs to god now and for ever Amen. Saying the same thing. Did you hear what Peter just said? Some of y'all missed that. He says in the King James Version, to him be glory and dominion, not just when I'm being sifted, not just when I'm going through the preparation stage, not just when I'm going through my trials and my tribulation. But when I'm on the mountain, when I've got a pocket full of money, when everything seems to be going good, when my career is blasting, when my entrepreneurship is taking off, 
When everything around me is looking good, the dog is barking, the cat is meowing, the children are doing well, everything is good, to him be glory. No, that's not what he says. He says when things aren't so favorable, I've learned now after I have suffered a little while and now that it's been a perfection that's taken place and an establishment and a strengthening and a settlement, Peter says, move over, y'all. I got to give him some glory and some praise. <laughs> some of y'all might want to tell somebody beside you, move over, baby. Some of y'all may want to tell somebody in your house, move over, because I got to give God some glory and some praise. Excuse me, I got to open my mouth and shout hallelujah. I know I'm in this setting, but when I think about what that word says, I got to shout hallelujah. I know, I, I listen, I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything or not. Go ahead and open your mouth and say it. Listen, shout hallelujah to him, be glory and the man he says how long Peter forever and ever and he says amen amplified version says God all power belongs to you <laughs> and I know now that it is forever and ever and the amplified amplified version says the same thing Amen. Somebody shout amen with me right now. Amen. Go ahead and say it. Write it in the comment section if you're not in this auditorium. Amen means it is so. Peter gives the doxology. That's what he's giving. We normally in our doxology says the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That's the priestly prayer. But Peter gives this doxology and Peter says to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Peter's so happy. Can you imagine the excitement that Peter had? Peter is so happy. That Jesus had lifted him from his fall. Peter is so happy that Jesus kept his word. When you are converted. Peter is so happy that he now breaks out with an exclamation of praise. Some of y'all ought to be so happy that God blessed you through 2020 and through 2021 even though we may not have been in person and some of you have been touched by COVID some of you have been have have been affected by COVID some of you have been affected by the economy some of you all have been affected by by family members dying and some of us being near death some of you all have been affected by so many things over the past couple of years and now that God has brought you to the fourth Sunday in December the last Sunday in December of 2021 that you ought to have your own doxology if you don't have your own then take Peter's doxology and say this to God to him be glory and dominion and power forever and ever and listen to this add this and I'm not going to take it back either Yes, to him be glory and dominion and power forever and ever. And I will not take it back. Amen. Well, God bless you. <laughs> God's assure, God assures our salvation even while we're yet sinners according to Romans 5, 8 and Peter gives his doxology. Well, let me encourage some of you all that before we go into the new year, write your own doxology. <laughs> it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be... Just make it as intricate as you can. And just say to God, to you, be glory, dominion, power forever and ever when tears are streaming down and you may have to say it out of the cry but God to you 
be glory, dominion, and power forever. When whatever tomorrow brings any of our way, can you still say to you, be glory, dominion, and power forever? If, 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 if what I'm praying doesn't turn out the way I'm praying it and believing for it, can you still say to you, be glory, dominion, and power in other words, what Peter was saying, if it doesn't turn out the way I'm expecting it to, if the answer doesn't come the way I'm looking for it to come, he still gets the glory because he still has the dominion and the power to work through and to do whatever God is doing with me. Write your own doxology. Say to God out of your own spirit and heart what you want to say to him that will exalt him, magnify him, increase him, blow him up, make him bigger than how the world sees him. When people in your family and on your job and around you sees the things that you're going through when they can see the tears that you shed the heartache and pain that you have sometimes felt and still see you telling him to you be the glory you have the dominion and the power and I'm settled in that by saying amen if he doesn't open another door, if he doesn't make another way, I'm just as serious as I can be. If he doesn't ever heal me, to him be the glory and dominion and power from now on. And I'm settled in that. And I conclude by saying, Amen. Let's pray. Father, to you be glory, dominion, and power forever and ever. We bless your name, Jesus. You are the God of all grace. We own up to the fact that you are Lord of Lords and you're King of Kings. And we bless you. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Jireh. You're more than enough. You're Jehovah Shalom. You are our peace. And throughout this Advent season, we have worshiped you with hope and with joy and with serenity and through peace and so we bless you right now Jesus everything that's unsettled in us would you settle it today with your word let somebody grab a hold of this word right now and find settlement in what you say and what you have said we bless you. Save somebody today. Deliver somebody. Heal somebody. Set somebody free. And however you choose to do it, we say to you, your grace is sufficient and your strength is made perfect in our weakness. I know what the doctors have said to some people that I'm ministering to right now. But your grace, God, is sufficient. And to you, be glory, dominion, and power. So work your work today as only you can. 
and move by your power and by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Near a blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding side. Draw me near near a blessed Lord. Let this be your request today. To the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near near a blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding side. Here's what I sense today while they're playing that softly. If you can find a kneeling place in your house or wherever you are right now, if we weren't here at the camera and it wouldn't be improper for us to move from this point where we are I too would go and find a kneeling place but I want to kneel in my heart right now and if it's possible for you to find a kneeling place with your family or if you're by yourself just you and Jesus if you can't kneel can't get down on your knees can't kneel just bow your heads and lean forward in reverence to God bow your heart Kneel in your heart. Just come into a place of reverence with the Lord right now. And speak to God for the next minute or so concerning you and your relationship with Him. If there's something you want to thank Him for, something He has done for you, as we come to the last Sunday in this year, go ahead and give that glory and honor to Him right now for what He has done doors he may have opened needs he may have met ways he may have made strength he's giving you right now establishing something in your life your walk your relationship your heart with him go ahead and give that to him right now and just speak to him through praise and adoration as Peter did in giving his doxology And if you're not saved today, I want to pray with you along with thousands of others, preachers and teachers and deacons and trustees and and, uh, people from all walks of life and ministries. There are thousands of people on here with us praying for you today. And if you want to give your life to Christ, just pause right now and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. (laughs) Father, I've sinned and come short of your glory. But I'm asking you today, to forgive me for that sin. Forgive me for never asking you to be my savior. And after you have given and sacrificed so much for me in my life, today I want to ask you to forgive me and save me in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to work for you and live for you and you live your life through me. And I accept you and receive you today as my savior. Wash me in the blood now and cleanse me from my sin and save me and make me a child of yours. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And according to Romans 10, 13, if you have called upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. That's his word. And I believe God for you today. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God and raised Jesus from the dead, you are saved. Go ahead and bless God for your salvation. And write it in the comment section. I just gave Christ my life or I just received Jesus as Savior. If you are a backslider, let's pray this simple prayer. Father, forgive me for my backslidden ways. Restore me today. Cleanse me. 
Give me a hunger and thirst for your word. And allow me to walk in fellowship and unity and harmony. And in the spirit of the resurrected Christ with you. God, I partnership with you today. I partner with you today. I come into partnership with you right now. And I'll live my life for you and tell of your goodness in Jesus' name. Write it in the comment section. I'm just restored today. Or I've just restored my fellowship. Nearer. Nearer black. Go ahead and write it in. We're giving you time. Write it in. I just restored my fellowship. To thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now. Come on. Let's take it home. Consecrate me now. Let's go home, y'all. To thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine and here's what I want him to do let my soul let my soul look up with the steadfast hope and my will be lost in thy here's what I want him to do Draw me near. Let this be your prayer. 2022, let this be your prayer. To the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near. Just as near as you can. Near a blessed. Said, Lord, to thy precious bleeding side, to thy precious bleeding side, to thy precious. Bleeding side to thy precious bleeding side. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. May he bless you in your basket, your field, your store, your bond. May he bless you to plenty and to overflowing, down sitting, uprising, going out, coming in. May he bless your seed and your seeds seed even down to a thousand generations may he grant unto you traveling grace and mercies keep you healed and whole God be with you from me and my family we love you we bless God for you and the Lord Jehovah be with you and you give it back to me and my family because we need it very much as well until the next time and looking forward to seeing you on next Sunday first Sunday in January doors open at 9 30 we'll start worship at 9 45 and when the Lord is done with us we'll leave this auditorium if you cannot join us virtual uh, if you cannot join us in person Please continue to join us virtually. And we look to see you on December 31st, New Year's Eve, as we would like to pray a priestly prayer over you and your household and give you something that will be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name. If you were blessed by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us 
by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.